Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Our listener support campaign continues. You can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zelle app. And I want to thank Daniel for supporting the program that way. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. A reminder, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, you can do so wherever you download your podcast from. You can subscribe to us uh, in the Apple Podcast Store, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or in the uh, Amazon Music Store at amazon.com slash otrdetectives. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The original air date, March 16th, 1954, and the title is The Berlin Matter. For your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Dave Hopkins, Johnny. Camden Life of Fidelity. Got a German visa? Why, I sleep with it under my pillow, Davey. Huh? You want Berlin, your next port of call. Want it? Well, what's the story, Davy? It's like this, Johnny. A client of ours, Sam Harvey, category 50,000, 20 paid life. A couple of years ago, Harvey went to Berlin as consulting engineer for a machine tool firm. Six months ago, he upped his policy from 10 to 50,000. Good head on his shoulders. Just listen, huh? Also, he changed beneficiaries from his mother to a woman he married over there. Well, that's allowed, isn't it, Davy? Well, maybe, maybe not. Yesterday, we got a cable from Berlin police. Herr Sam Harvey is newly dead in the Rhineland. Well, Johnny? Okay, Dave, you named it. Berlin. How about taking a minute or so to talk about seals and fish that have some connection with the government of the United States? Now, that isn't as strange as it sounds. You take the matter of seals, for example. There are two types of seals that are the responsibility of the Secretary of State. First, there's the Great Seal of the United States, which is stamped on all official documents. The Secretary of State makes sure it's always on hand when it's needed. The other kind of seals he takes care of are the ones that swim in the ocean since it's up to the secretary to work out agreements with representatives of other countries and let them know how many seals can be caught in what is called international waters and when. The secretary of state works out similar deals for the catching of fish and lobsters because these agreements are actually treaties. Before they can be put into effect, they have to be approved by two-thirds of the Senate. As a matter of fact, any time our government wants to work out a deal with a foreign country on trade, mutual assistance, fish, seals, or lobsters, it's done by treaty. And all treaties are signed by the president, though some of them aren't drawn up until after the Secretary of State has worked over the rough spots in order to pave the way for prompt ratification. So, just remember, the Secretary of State is a mighty important wheel in the machinery of your United States government. Expense accounts submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Camden Life and Fidelity Company Limited, Camden, New Jersey. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Berlin matter. Expense account item one, $546.73, airfare and incidentals to Berlin via New York City. Item two, $3.10, cab fare, Templehof Airport, American Zone, to the Walden Stern Hotel, where I registered, sent my luggage to my room, then went on to the red granite pile called Police Headquarters, on the Wilhelmstrasse. Here, a sub-lieutenant saw my credentials, listened to my story, and ushered me to the proper Ober-Lieutenant. 
Meissner, Wilhelm Meissner. I'm Johnny Dollar. Would you wish to know the death of Sam Hardy? No. Everything you can tell me. So, last Tuesday, the body of Herr Hardy was found in the harbor. They had. Papers he carried made possible his identification, and his being an American national, therefore, proper authorities were notified, as well as proper information on proper forms, as well as... Can I see these forms, Lieutenant? Of course. Here, as you please. Mm, thank you. It says here his body was found just north of Spandau. Where's Spandau, Lieutenant? British zone. Well, what would Sam Harvey be doing there? Please. Well, it says here Sam was employed by Koenig Machine Tool, which it also says here is in the American zone. So I'd like to know, Lieutenant, if you have any idea what he was doing. I will show you something. It will make things easier. Good. Map of Berlin. French zone, British zone, American, Russian. Uh-huh. And here is Spandau on the harbor there. Above it, north, French zone. So? My guess is your Sam Harvey died somewhere in the French zone, was thrown into the harbor river, which current carried him down to here, to the harbor there, where he was found. But that's only a guess. Unofficial. Official, it would be written down, but it is not. Why do you make a guess like that, Lieutenant? You see, here, the suburb Eagle in the French zone, it is trackless. What does that mean? Rough. Tough. Now, Sam Harvey is certainly not the first man who was dumped into the Harbor River. Dumped? Dump means murdered and pushed, Lieutenant. Murdered and pushed. Okay. What else? See here, in the file, positive identification made by Paul Turner. Who is Paul Turner? A friend of Herr Harvey. He claimed the body and buried it. Also, he took it upon himself to notify Herr Harvey's wife. Why does it say wife? Nowhere, but I recall Herr Turner said Paul Harvey was in Vienna and that he would inform her of the death of her husband. Well, I think that's real friendly, don't you? Please. Never mind. Well, thanks, Lieutenant. Can I do something for you in return? A, a beer or something? <laughs> Expense account item three. Ninety cents for two rounds of brown beer with my newly found friend, Lieutenant Willie Meister, at the beer stuba across the street, where I told him all I knew about Milwaukee and got in return a promise of continued cooperation. Expense account item four, $1.20 to number 15 Kendenstrasse in the American Zone. The address of Paul Turner. That's right, Dollar. I identified him. Who killed him, Mr. Turner? Oh, now listen. Yeah? Don't get cagey with me and say who killed him and lean closer to me to see if I'm going to go to pieces. I didn't even know he was killed. He was pushed into a river. Listen, there was a beer festival up in the French Zone last week. Tegel, a suburb. So you can figure it out. Sam got drunk and fell in the river? Not pushed? That's the way I read it. Did he ever say anything to you about all that insurance he carried? No. Mm -mm. Tied a lot, huh? First it was ten, then a while back he upped it to fifty. Thousand? That's right. <laughs> well, she's worth it. Who? Paul's wife? Worth every nickel of it. Which comes to a question. Well, you mean, where is she? I mean, where is she? She'll be here. Her husband's been dead for four days. Oh, well, she's in Vienna. Well, it must take all of all oh, three hours flying time to get here from Vienna. Listen, Dollar, I'm going to tell you something. Don't ask questions with raised eyebrows like everybody's lying or covering up. A guy named Sam Harvey died, and there's been a lot of tears on account of it. So gentle your way around him. Huh? Make the questions come out polite. You know, I'm going to try that. Good, good. Uh, what are you doing here in Berlin? I have a civilian job with the Army. I interpret. Oh? How do you like it? Nice. See how we can get along if we try? How come Paul's wife hasn't showed up for four days? Well, I have a wire here. Wait a minute. I'll read it to you. Uh, illness gone. Arrived Templehof Airport this evening. 18 hours. Elsa. Let me see him. You read Germans, are you? Uh, no. 
How are you going to meet her? Right. Sure be glad to have you along, Johnny. Be nice. Fine. Press account item five, $3.40, full tank of petrol for Paul Turner's Volkswagen. He had his hand trapped in his pants pocket. We had a little time before Elsa's plane landed at Tempelhof, so we rode around Berlin, a three zone. The fourth didn't encourage sightseers. At a little before six, we got to Tempelhof. <laughs> Oh, she's a little ahead of schedule. Yeah. You'll uh, know Mrs. Harvey when you see her? You know, you ask polite, but you don't listen polite, Johnny Kidd. I told you Sam's wife is worth every penny the 50 grand you say left her. No, would I say a thing like that if I... I didn't know her when I saw her. Well, you haven't mentioned it. Now, before he married her, the three of us went around a bit in Vienna. Then Sam married her. And Elsa stayed in Vienna. I haven't seen her since. Six months now. Why did she stay in... Yeah, that must be Elsa. See? Black dress. Heavy black veil. Black gloves. Classy dresser, that Elsa. Yeah. Come on. Elsa. Elsa. Dieter? Paul Turner, Elsa. Don't you remember? Oh, this veil is... It is so... I will lift it. Oh, hello, Paul. It's been a long time since we were together, Elsa. A long time. I'm sorry Oh, about... you, my husband's close friend, is dear friend, Paul. Uh, Mrs. Harvey? Dieter? I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Dieter? Insurance investigator means that I was sent here to investigate your husband's death for my company. Well, it means he's got $50,000 for you, Elsa, but first he's got to ask... Please, Paul, let the gentleman speak. I'll have to ask you where you were when your husband died. In Vienna. Why did you live in Vienna, Mrs. Harvey, and your husband in Berlin? I have work in Vienna. Work I cannot leave with the refugee commission. Sam had his work here. We lived there as we wanted and as we needed. You are finished, Mr. Bella? Well, no, I'm not quite finished. Paul, please. You finish, Dollar, for now. Come on, Elsa, I'll get you through customs. Expense account item six, $2.20. Cab fare back to the Walden Stern Hotel. Item seven, $1.50, supper. Knockwurst and sauerkraut washed down with black beer. After which, ten hours sleep with no dreams. Observe what else, Herr Dollar. What? 
On the desk, under his arm, complete close with me. A letter Herr Pilot Hausmann has begun to write. It is, of course, in German. I will translate it. If you wish of Sam Harvey to know, come you to the bar. Now I will move his arm. You see to whom this letter is addressed? To me. To you, Johnny Dollar. What do you say to that? You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the Presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was the second vice president to become president. The son of a poor family, he was indentured to a cloth maker as apprentice at 15. And when he was 19, he bought his freedom for $30. As a congressman from New York in 1837, he opposed the entrance of Texas as a slave territory. During his administration, the country was strongly pro-slavery. And as a protest, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. The anti-slavery group in his party strongly resented his signing a bill which penalized anyone who refused to return runaway slaves to their rightful owners. If you don't have his name by now, here's one more clue. His administration saw California's entrance into the Union. Who was he? Millard Fillmore, 13th President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Dollar, since you have arrived, you have talked with people. With me, with Paul Turner, and at Temple of Airdrome, with a widow. What words did you speak to them, Johnny Dollar, that makes this man dead? Read it this way, Willie. I'm on a job. Insurance investigation. Yeah, into the dying of Sam Harvey. Into the murder of Sam Harvey. $50,000 worth. So, perhaps you have discovered a thing which I, too, should know of the death of Sam Harvey, which will explain this death. If that is so, then tell me. So far, I've found nothing. Nothing you don't know already. Not one thing. Please. I tell you, I Please. don't... Please. I believe you. Well, you've got away with you, Willie. Sure, no, You want to tell me things now? Happily, I do. This, uh, Kirk Hausman. Who is he? Pilot of a river barge. What else? Thief, petty, also grand. What else? Before he grew out of it, a black marketeer. And after that, what? Smuggler. On west to the east zone. Also vice versa. Very rich. And still you let him get away? Please. Go ahead. Good Hausman. Besides what he was, was also an eel. Do you understand? A slippery eel. Many times arrested, many times released. Insufficient evidence. Mm. An eel. And he's murdered on the Havel River and found at Spandau, near the... Near the French zone, where also was found the body of Sam Harvey, where... Please. Forgive me. Near the French zone, where also was found the body of Sam Harvey. And he begins a letter to me saying, if I want to know about Sam Harvey... Which will become an exhibit on the official files. Which figures he knew something about Harvey's death. I would say so. Then someone stopped him from getting the letter to me. I would say so. And that's all? No. Kurt had a friend, a beloved friend, Fräulein Mary Fuller. She came with a troop four years ago to entertain your occupation forces. She entertained them. When they left, she stayed. Unter den Linden was what she wanted, she says. Where do I find her? Where do we find her? Yeah, you and me. Where? At Zeelendorf. There's a carnival there. A carnival? Yeah, waxwork, the hula dancers, knife throwers. Fräulein Mary stands in front and beckons so. 
Well, we just better see this Fraulein, Willie. Yeah, after the ambulance has taken away the body of Herr Hausmann. <laughs> Yankee Doodle, if I ever saw one. And Dandy. Hiya. And look who you've got to be with. Fred Iron. Go away, Willie. I'm earning a living. It is necessary to talk to you, Fred Iron. You too. It'll be my pleasure. Da. Something has happened, Fred Iron. Of course. What about him? He is dead. <laughs> Fred Iron, I'm sorry, but sometimes it becomes necessary <laughs> for me. There's a bench over there. He's a bum. You know that, don't you? Sure, you know that. But I'm please sit down. Thank you, Willie. How did Kirk die, Willie? By a bullet in the back of the neck. How else would he die? He was writing a letter to me when he was shot. Oh. Why would he be doing a thing like that, Mary? Who are you? Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Why? I mean, why? Why are you here now talking to me in front of a tourist trap? And with Willie here, what's happening? Just take it easy. That's the latest word, just take it easy. All right, okay. Brave smile. How is it? Fine. Great. Questions, Fraulein. Whenever you're ready. Do you know who killed Kurt Fraulein? No. Fraulein, five days ago, an American by the name of Sam Harvey was found in the harbor there, drowned. Did you know him? Oh, Sam... Old Sam Harvey. What about him? He was a thief. How? The barge on the river. Kurt's barge? Sam owned it with Kurt. Anything illegal that could be done on the river. Smuggling, black market, name it. Anything from Potsdam and up the canals all the way to Hamburg. If it was illegal and could be carried by barge, my Kurt and good old Sam Harvey. I thought Sam was a machine tool engineer. Only when the barge business was slow. Did you know his wife? Practically. What does that mean? I was a shopper. Sam would give me money and say, buy for Elsa. Present. Silk stuff they make over in the French zone. Leather from the British zone. Lots of these ceramic earrings. See, like I'm wearing? Yeah, real nice. Just make them for pierced ears. Sam showed a pair of them to Kurt, and Kurt made me pierce my ears so I could wear them, too. Yeah. Sam would get me to buy sweaters and woolens for her. Buy them and send them to her. To Vienna? Sure. One more thing. You know a lad named Paul Turner? No. You want me anymore, Willie? Thanks. Hey, my hair, Fraulein. Now, come on in. Now, come on in. We got a snake charmer. We got a nice I asked Willie to drop me off at Paul Turner's in the American Zone. There I asked Turner the address of Sam's widow, Elsa Harvey. He sent me to the Tyrol Hotel, where on the third floor rear, Elsa opened the door to me. What do you wish here? To make an apology, Mrs. Harvey. Consider you have done so. Good day, Herr Dollar. And uh, to do another thing. To give you the papers you'll need to sign, so you can get that 50000 insurance of your husband. Come in. Give them to me. Sure. Take your time about it, Mrs. Harvey. Read them over. I'll wait till you're finished. A messenger will bring them to you. Yeah, sure he will. Mrs. Harvey. Yes? You're a very beautiful woman. Thank you. Very beautiful. You always wear your hair like that? Long, falling to your shoulders? Do me a favor. What? Put your hair up for me. Put my... I don't understand you. Oh, please. Just see how you look. I've been wondering. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Und what, Herr Dollar? Well, I've already said it. You're a very beautiful woman. You must go. Sure. Be the thing. I'll be the thing, Herr Dollar.
Expense account item eight, one dollar and thirty cents. Cab fare to the small carnival in Zehlendorf. And a girl who stood there and dared people to come in. To ask her for an address, I guess she must know. She'd sent so many presents to it. Expense account item nine, $63.95, airfare and incidentals to Vienna. Expense account item ten, cab fare, one dollar even. To a red brick apartment building, five stories high and a block square. Oh, uh, Harvey? That's right. Mrs. Harvey is dead. When? Yesterday morning, early. Listen, did she get a wire from Berlin last Tuesday? Yes, yes, she did. But of course she could not read it. I gave it to the other lady. What other lady? Her friend who lives across the hall, who was kind to her and took care of her, who paid for her funeral. And who moved out right after it was over? Yes, but how did you know? inside, Paul? Uh-huh. You answer her door for her now? Mm-hmm. So I have to get past you to speak to her, huh? <laughs> Elsa? Yes, boy? It's Johnny Dollar. Good. Come on in. Hello, Frau Harvey. Here are the papers, Herr Dollar. I have signed them. Oh, fine. Thank you. What are you doing? Staring paper. Are you going crazy, Dollar? No, no. I always tear up policies this way, Paul. What is the meaning of this? What's your real name? My name? Cut it out, honey. This dollar's no slob. How much do you know, Dollar? All of it. For instance? Well, I just got in from Vienna. A girl died there. Sam Harvey's wife. Mm -hmm. See, I told you it wasn't any slob, honey. She was sick. Then she died. Her husband died. Why shouldn't I have the money in the policy? I took care of her and... That's not legal. That's all, honey. How could he know, Paul? How could he possibly know? By a stupid little slip. Earrings. For pierced ears. Like Sam's wife had and like you don't. Which made me go to Vienna to make sure. And I did. And I'm sure. Okay, Dollar. Okay what? You tore up the policy. Blow. Paul, you knew this girl was a phony right away at the airport. But you went along with her. I asked myself why. You got an answer? You're trying to hide something, too. Murder? Yes, something's got to give, Dollar. Sam's murder? Carl? You know what you know, and I know what I know. One of us has got to go. Killed Sam because you wanted in on the barge business. The smuggling the black market. But Carl, why Carl, Paul? Why did you kill him? He didn't want me in. So bad he didn't want me in, he threatened to get to you. He almost did. And you almost got out of Germany, darling. But now I don't... <laughs> hurt no one. I took care of her when she was sick. Even when she died, I paid to bury her. I took a chance, and I lost Mr. Dollar. Who can say I harmed anyone? And in Vienna, it's not very pleasant. It's... Oh, please. It's not for me to say. It's for another fellow. Name of Willie. Nice man. Very nice. Expense account item 11, $67.70. Hotel bill and incidentals while in Berlin and Vienna. Expense account total, $693.03. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, 
Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Benny Rubin, Edgar Barrier, Jerry Gaylor, Hal March, and Virginia Gray. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at the same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Welcome back. Well, first of all, uh, a great setting. A post-war Europe, the countries formerly uh, ruled by the Nazis, are great settings uh, for a story. Of course, the most famous of these uh, is the uh, third man, Joseph Cotton and Orson Welles, featuring prominently in that film, but this illustrates that the setting is ripe with opportunities for uh, mystery and for intrigue. Just the discussion of city being divided into four zones and how it was possible for a death to occur in one zone and the body to end up in another makes for a very complex uh, investigation certainly creates that uh, potential. And you throw in the Cold War elements. Probably one of my favorite uh, radio takes is the Australian Gregory Keane serial, 26 Hours, which was actually 26 hours in length when you accounted for uh, commercials and really took full advantage of being in Cold War Berlin. Uh, this episode, of course, you just got half an hour, but they really do play with a lot of elements and really explore the city as much as you can in a half-hour show. It was interesting to hear another script from Mort Fine and David Friedkin. It's been quite a while since we've heard them on Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, and it does seem like they've made some changes. You can still feel a lot of the signature fine and freaking uh, dialogue, but it's not at the same level that it was in Broadway Is My Beat or in their earlier uh, Johnny Dollar scripts, particularly with Johnny's dialogue. With their earlier script, it was so distracting the way that they were having Johnny talk. This seems to work better with the way Lun portrays the character. Although I think his last uh, line in the story is, you know, a classic line from them, but I think it fits with Johnny's character rather well. A listener comments and feedback, and we have a comment uh from uh, YouTube regarding the Paul Gorell matter. I was a kid in the 1980s, and I'm from a small southern town. I tried to tell some of these interns where I work about how Rideshare used to work uh, back then, as described in the episode, they don't believe me. People would place ads in the backs of Penny Saver, Church Bolton Boards, Co-op, uh, Piggly Wiggly, or the classified ads in the newspaper uh, for someone traveling to a certain direction. Well, of all the things that, you know, you could tell the generation coming up, I, I think that the existence of rideshare ads might be one of the least unbelievable stories from the 1980s. I mean, physical encyclopedias, drinking from water hoses, kids running neighborhoods unsupervised. Uh, because the rideshare thing does continue, it just continues in different places. Because uh, you can still find rideshare ads on uh, Craigslist. 
putting things up on bulletin boards. That was an experience. And far more unbelievable, I guess, than rideshare, but I think I still have seen a few around at a grocery stores here and there in Idaho. But thanks so much for the comment, and now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Robert, Patreon supporter since August of 2020, currently supporting us at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please rate and review this podcast wherever you're getting this podcast from. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe at your favorite podcasting site including Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. We're over at uh, the Amazon Music site at amazon.com slash otrdetectives. We will be back next Friday with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, but listen up tomorrow for Tales of the Texas Rangers, where... Might as well wait here in the library, Ranger. The doctor's still in with the girl. He's had a mighty bad shock. Did she tell you where it happened, Sheriff? Yeah, the old cattle road east to the ranch. I got some men riding out there now. They'll call us as soon as they find the body. That girl isn't going to be able to talk real soon. We better get out with your men. Oh, here's the girl's father. Mm. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting, Sheriff. Oh, how are you, Mr. Meston? Glad how you got here, Ranger. Can we talk to your daughter now, Mr. Meston? Uh, I'm afraid not. Doctors put her to sleep. Says she must have absolute rest for a few hours. Mm, there's no point in our waiting then, Sheriff. We can come back later. I'm sorry, but that would be best. I'll walk out with you. What's the best way to get to that cattle road? Drive into town, then around the highway. Be shorter to cut across the ranch on horses. You got yours in your trailer. Maybe Mr. Meston will lend me one. Take your pick of the stable, Sheriff. Couldn't we drive across the range? No, you got a ravine to cross and a stream to ford. What time did your daughter get home, Mr. Meston? Just a minute before I called the sheriff. A little after 1.30. I'd only been in bed about an hour. Locked up about 12.30 and turned in. Hmm. Is this the car she came home in? Yeah, Bob Brady's car. I heard her drive up, then I heard her crying. Came in and tore up the stairs to my bedroom. I'm afraid it's going to take a long time to get over this. Don't let anybody touch this car until I can get a fingerprint man to go over it. Killer may have left it. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.